So I want to introduce myself first, and then I can um, throw into sort of how it ties in. And I feel really bad. I can't compete with Madeline's little smile there. <laughs> Cheryl Rice. Uh, I'm the current chair of the Toledo Lucas County Rain Garden Initiative. Um, if you haven't heard of it, go to the website and check some stuff out. It's got some good resources on there. There's a couple things. We're still trying to fix a couple broken links up there. So if you don't see something, there's always a way to send an email and you can catch me that way. Um, I actually work for the federal government. I work for the USDA, the Depart US Department of Agriculture. I work for the portion of it that is called the Natural Resources Conservation Service. Um, and uh, most people don't know who that is if you're not already an agricultural producer. So has anyone here heard of NRCS other than Sean here? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, so what NRCS gets to do generally, most of the staff, and I'm kind of an oddball on the staff, is most of our staff out in the field um, gets to work one-on-one -on -one with large landowners and agricultural producers putting conservation on their property. And that could be anything from a windbreak to protect their crops. It could be changing their management style as it relates to tillage and fertility. And it could be uh, taking marginal land out of production and putting it into something like a wetland, or we can even put it into oak openings habitat around here. So that's generally, if you're going to run into one of my uh, coworkers, that's what they do. Um, so a good person to ask questions to and to impose some of what's going on. I'm kind of the eyeball. I'm actually an urban resource conservationist. So they put me up here in Lucas County for some obvious reasons, right? So we have some water quality issues. It's a good opportunity to take what my organization does at the national scale, actually, honestly, around the world, really, and, and translate that back through things you can do yourself, translate that back to municipalities as to what's going on in the greater watershed. I spend a lot of time uh, driving up and down the watershed, is how I call it. I go from Toledo, and I drive up to Fort Wayne, and I drive up to Defiance County, and I tell them what the cities are doing, and then I drive back down to the city, and I tell them what all the producers and the large landowners are doing. Um, so that's my day. I spend some time in a nice government vehicle. Thank you for providing that for me. Um, so my personal car is only slightly beat up from this type of stuff. Um, but I get a chance then to see the landscape really all the way from Indiana and Michigan, where all this watershed starts, all the way down to where it ends up at the lake. Um, and I know not everybody gets a chance to do that as a, a normal basis. So that's sort of what Todd and I get to do is bring some of that to the table today. Um, and the tool that I get to show you to do um, is, is one that's focused on water conservation, but I want you to tie it back into a lot of what Todd had brought up. That's really part of a, a bigger picture. Um, you know, when we talk about selling this to people, you talk about costs, right? You don't have to pay the city your water bill if you're using the water that comes off the roof. You don't have to use as much that the city has pulled out of the lake and treated, and then you get to pay for it. So that's one selling point. But I kind of hesitate on the broad scale of using that because um, as soon as you can do a, a number crunch and realize you're maybe only selling or saving five or ten dollars at any given season, all of a sudden your motivation goes away. And you know, I, I guess I'd love to think that your motivation goes beyond a couple of bucks on a, on a water water bill from the city. Um, so that I want you to to think about what you can be doing on your property. Um, so, starting off first, this is simple. This is very simple, and it's really fun because you can use power tools, all right? So that's the first part I do. And I have some stuff over there, just so you know, and I have the directions, so in case I become verbose and talk really fast, which I have the propensity to do both, you will have it in hand to go back to. So I will let you all pass this through. Those who want it, please take it. If you don't, take extra copies for folks, your neighbors and things you'd like them to do, especially if they're handy folks and they would like to do it. Um, that would be a great resource to share. It's a great way to, what you were talking about, advertise to our neighbors, right? So the idea with the rain barrel is to take an opportunity for an impervious surface in your property and make it work for you. Um, that typically for most rain barrels is going to be a roof. Um, you're going to look at a porch, your main set of roof off your garage. I encourage you to look at sheds, your neighbor's garage that butts right up to your property and they're not collecting water off of it. Um, you might be surprised at the places you can collect off of. Some of the community gardens get very creative um, because they're looking for opportunities to, again, not have to have a fiscal link back to the work that they're trying to do. They normally have larger community goals and they don't really have a lot of dollars that are going to come in. Um, so a rain barrel is a starting point. This particular barrel 
um, was donated to us by Coca-Cola, and justly so. They have a freshwater program. They are one of the largest water users on the face of the earth. Um, so I think it's only justified that they do a little bit of work on the other end. This is one component of what they do globally. They also do some granting, some large-scale projects and restoration. But again, I think that's pretty much um, only a portion of what they could be doing at this point. So they give us those. I think you guys have quite a few of these, right? Yeah. Um, so a good starting point. Um, I'm going to suggest when you go look for barrels, there are people that will put a barrel by the side of the road and say, you know, give me 10 bucks, you can have my barrel. I put a question mark on those. These need to be something you would want to put. Um, on your garden. So if this used to have something in it that you wouldn't particularly want to eat, then you might not want to use the barrel. Um, your plants might not appreciate what comes off the plastic in here. Um, so that's the starting point. When we first started doing these, um, I'll share with you that the Rain Garden Initiative has been since, around since 2007. And really that came from one of the large flooding events that happened. We had about five and a half inches of rain come in about uh, 30 hours. And uh, some of it came into my basement and through my garage. Uh, the storm sewer uh, plugged right at the front of my house and, um, and did that. So I spent that July 5th tearing out the carpet from a lower room in my house. And so some of those issues start coming up and we start looking for solutions because we had a number of folks have that same happenstance. And a lot of folks are in worse condition than I was because it was actually a combined sewer or their, um, their sewer from their toilet system that actually ended up in their basement. And so we looked at ideas. Um, one of them is rain gardens, and Todd mentioned that he's got a couple in his yard. And there is a manual that we put together that details how to put a rain garden in. Um, I think Todd said it as best as possible. The simpler you do it, usually the better they work. And it's got some of the native plant suggestions in the back of that too, so you're welcome to grab that if you're interested. And one of the other solutions that came from that was uh, rain barrels, or really just stormwater catchment. Um, if, if you went back to maybe your great-grandparent's house, or um, folks that are out there, we were collecting rainwater um, all along. Um, before we created a, a, a network, an infrastructure of treated water, that's sort of the option, one of the options that was out there. And in fact, the house I grew up in has a beautiful cistern in it. Um, what they wanted my great-grandfather to do when they put the water lines out in front, that was he was supposed to trash that. Um, and, and the concept there was, of course, if you were tying into the water line, you have to pay, help them pay for that infrastructure. And if you were using your other water, that would potentially contaminate it, so some health risks. Um, well, my grandfather, as subversive as any other human being, said, yes, I did it, and then never did. So we used that uh, to irrigate the garden in the backyard, exactly. Um, so, uh, and a number of folks weren't in as, uh, uh, Savannah Township at that time wasn't checking everybody's houses. Some of the communities go out now and check. So you might have a farmhouse that you would expect. You can see the all vestiges. You can say, oh, they had to have had a cistern here. But it might very well be disconnected because the municipality is concerned not only about health risks, but also um, making sure they can have the, the dollars come in to sustain the system that they've put out in front of your house. So just something to think about. This isn't particularly new. Um, a lot of things we do with rain gardens and cover crops and some of the things we're doing for conservation are really just revisiting successes we've had in the past and making them fit what we do now um, and, and just translating it. So think of it that way, tying it into a, like a whole system that's going on on your property. This is just one option. We also, uh, Coca-Cola also, also does totes. I don't know if you've ever seen them. They're big squares. They're on a wooden pallet. They typically have an aluminum cage. And they sometimes are as big as 250 gallons. A lot of the community gardens, they were able to give us those. But looking at options like this that have the physical capacity to do it, because this is awfully strong, this plastic on top, and this structural uh, component is really, really tough. I mean, you want something like that, something you can secure as well, something safe. Uh, you don't want your toddler walking by it at the end of the day or your neighbor's friends come over and knock it over and it's actually caused some, some sort of injury. So thinking about those things when you put this in the landscape, what you're going to use it for. But it starts off with a barrel, okay? So this one, food grade, uh, you don't want any of those totes that somebody put waste oil in. And you're really going to put three holes in it. That's as simple as it gets. You can do that lots of different ways. I like power tools. Eric and I both have fun with power tools. So you're going to have one here, one here, and then a way to cut it up with at the top, OK? Now, the first thing you're going to want to grab is the different features. And that's on that list that I gave you. So the first thing you want is a way to get the water in and the water out, right? So the water out is going to come through your typical tap. And the reason I tell you you're going to want a typical tap is you're going to want to take some sort of garden hose then 
and, and take it somewhere where you would like it. That could be in a watering can. When I had mine out and my kids were toddlers, this was like the best entertainment ever, <laughs> was to have the barrel there. I'd give them a watering can, they'd fill it up and they would do whatever they wanted to all over the yard. It gives them a way to engage with the garden and they have control over it, they have autonomy on it. It's pretty simple. It's also, again, a great way to hook up your garden hose. I have most of my rain barrels set up right now on soaker hoses. Um, so I have the hose tied up in here, uh, attached almost all the time, and I have it running out to um, garden beds. I have a sandy loam soil, like Todd said, I sit on the west side, so I can grow pretty much any, anything. Um, it is high enough and along the side of the house that it does tend to get dry. A couple of years ago when we had the 100-year um, drought that we had, um, my garden looked pretty shabby, and um, I was trying to keep weeds from coming in, different things I was trying to manage, because I get a lot of fertility because I also have a dog. Um, so I put a soaker hose in those sort of more challenging places. Um, my other rain barrels, I have soaker hoses put around where I put in vegetables. So around peppers, <coughs> tomatoes, um, cucurbits, everything in that family, I have them running there. So, and I'm, what I tell most people is I'm the lazy gardener. I put the soaker hoses on and if I see, oh, something needs to be watered, I literally turn the tap and then I walk away. Because that was all the gardening I did that day. <laughs> you got a question? I have a question about the elevation of the barrels to as to how high it needs to be to distribute the, the water to the garden. Because if it's low, the which is going to have a lot of pressure right there. True. If it's higher, it's going to have it's going to be able to go further. Correct. So Correct. So you also want it to be high enough to see. How do you build? You've got something that you're recommending. Uh, Not a specific height. Although I do have an article that talks about some specifics. 36, okay. 24. I actually have messed with it. Especially sure right. when I'm dealing with that, you know, I think yeah. I like more. Or send or leave or raise it. Yeah. 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 I do. I have one. I have one set exactly. up on cinder blocks. But I messed. I messed with it. I've only got two. That's what. Oh, I'm there. <laughs> I have one set up on cinder blocks, and I have one set up on a. A different thing my husband kind of built and the reason I have that is the, the one garden bed um, is the one shape that it is in that gets enough pressure out for that soaker hose yeah and the other one is built real long and narrow so I have to have that at a different height to push all the way to the end so yeah we kind of messed with it so I think your tinkering is probably a good approach I like what you do it and dump right into an area from the rain barrel and then it actually soak out into a larger area because of that. Yeah. That's the way it really should work in the first place. Yeah, keep That's it first simple. I've seen it like that, that, that works too. Yeah, yeah. So, and you sort of definitely want to have it elevated because again, how are you going to get a water can for this, right? And when you build this, um, you're going to need to, of course, whatever hole you're going to put in is going to have to accommodate this. Most people think you have to come up with a big fixture, do this. No. All you have to do is get the correct size hole saw, okay? So whatever you're purchasing, and that's in there too, that you want to make sure whatever it's drilling out, that this is going to fit right into it, okay? We tinkered a little bit, got one size bigger, one size smaller. We tinkered with buying different fixtures. My only recommendations are, um, there are plastic ones of these. Um, I just don't see how that makes sense uh, in the long run. I've seen them fail. A lot of the commercial expensive ones out there have ones that are sort of mixed plastic and metals. Um, I know uh, Lee and I have seen a lot of those fail in very short order. We've made these barrels now for six years, and I haven't had anybody come back and tell me the brass fixtures have failed, um, and that's what I would recommend. So that's kind of what we want to do. And really all you're doing is you're going to take the barrel, and I, this is always fun when we do this at workshops, right, because people think you look like a fruit cake, but I'm okay with that. Um, so you kind of ride the barrel. And you can do this even by yourself. First thing I tell you to do is eye protection. These are very valuable, not replaceable. Put something over your eyes. And you're going to do this. Now, I tell most people a couple inches from the bottom. Why do you think I do that? Yeah, well, yeah, but that even you know, your water gets more than three inches. So why two, three inches? Because it's not enough. So, yeah, so there's garbage coming off your roof, right? Could be anything the squirrels took up there, could be the junk from the trees around your house, or more likely it's the bits of asphalt that are coming off the shingles, right? And nobody wants that to get pushed into this fixture. It'll ultimately clog it, but also you don't want that going down your garden as into your garden either. So you want a, like a reservoir at the bottom here for that sediment junk. You know, ultimately it's a maintenance thing, right? You're going to have to clean it back out and find a place for it, but you don't want it to ruin your fixture. So you're just going to sink it in here go down in and you make the hole. Now it's very simple. People think you have to again put all this plumber's tape and everything. No. If it's the right size you just screw it in there. That's all you do. Makes a watertight seal. 
never had one leak yet. Nobody's come back. I even tell people, if it leaks, come tell me, because I've been doing this for six years, and I'm wanting to see. None of them failed. None of them have done that. So that's all about. So that's the water coming out. And it's really fun to take pictures of people who don't use power tools and don't sit on rain barrels like a horse, take their picture when they do this, because they become very embarrassed. And I love doing that to people when they put themselves outside of their comfort zone, especially with power tools. Okay. The next thing you want to do is get the water in, right? Okay, so you know where your kids are going to come, or you're going to come in water, hook it up, soap, or hoses, whatever. You have to have a location for it to come into. Now, what we have done to make it look all nice and slick and neat is really nice, beautiful, super, super round. Now, it looks just, bless you, looks just like this, but it's a four inch. Okay, it is a monster to use. It is fun, right? Um, Catherine has helped us build some of these, right? So we can go ahead and you're like this. And if you don't have upper body strength, you, you hope you have like chaps on about right here. Because that's what happens. Okay, so that's nice, right? If you're real solid in upper body strength, it's fine. It's a little risky, not to mention the bit is worth about 35, 40 bucks. So not always the best way. You can get a jigsaw, cut the space. You can cut it so it's the shape of your downspout. So you can take the downspout and almost put it directly in here. And it can be the same shape as your three inch or four inch. They make these at six inches now. Why do you think they started making them at six inches now and they weren't before? Yeah, yeah. Heavy rain. exactly. Because we don't have any climate shift going on. It's just more rain. Just this year, right? Sure. Okay, so <laughs> you look at options. <laughs> options. These come in round ones now different ones. I suggest you look at what your house looks like. Some of this is going to be neighborhood issues, right? If your house was, the whole neighborhood looks the same, and you put on those fabulous six inches and everything. My dad did that and had to discuss things with neighbors afterward. Okay, so keep those things in mind. But this, this opening here, the whole goal here is this needs to keep up with however much roof you're putting into it, okay? This can be a tiny little roof, right? Or this can be half your house. Mine is about a quarter of my house, so this barrel fills up in less than 10 minutes like that in a typical rainfall event, 10 minutes. I can have my barrel ready to go and use it for my garden, it, it, but what do you do 15 minutes later, right? The barrel's full, right? So you got the water in, now you have to have a safety overflow, okay? So we're gonna talk about that as well. Now what we've done with this nice, beautiful round hole um, is that we went and got things like this. So this is very typical of what you put on the side of your house for your dryer vent to come out. It's got a screen in here. And the whole point of that is one, it's gonna let the water go in pretty easily, not a big deal, but it also is screening out some of that junk that you don't want to have to clean off the bottom. It also keeps the mosquitoes out from laying eggs inside your water. Because what's one thing what your neighbor's gonna ask you, right? They're gonna say, well, what are you doing here? Because any mosquito that comes and bites them, of course, had to have come from your 50 gallon barrel that they can see from their back patio. Okay, so again, something to talk to them, show them what you've done differently. There are more than one way to get at this, okay? And in fact, the funnest thing you can do on the internet if you're really trying to come up with whatever your design is going to be and you don't have the mega $35 bit to make a perfect circle, is you can say, okay, how do I get water into my rain barrel? There's a million different modifications out there. One of the ones I like the best, because we have done this at um, a number of the community gardens, and the schools that use these, because we're trying to keep them as low maintenance as possible, because teachers do plenty already. Um, this is one that a uh, man from Wild Ones that Todd had mentioned before. This is what he did. And this is the very same thing we've done in another Earth community garden. So it's a modification to this entry point, and it's a way of creating basically a funnel. And there's a screen at the bottom of the funnel. Okay. So you, if everybody's ever had a pool, and you know those baskets that come out of pool filters, and you can kind of pull the pump out, dump it out, put it back in. It's the same concept. So that's another modification if you're interested. Okay. The reason we did this at the soil, and I work, this project mostly works out of the Soil and Water District with the Rain Garden Initiative. We did this because this was super efficient and it looks clean and nice. People like how clean and nice and simple this is. If you have something where it's got a caterpillar clip and it's cranked on there, you know, people expect it to look all finished. So we did this. This is pretty cost effective as well. Once you buy the bit and you're doing many barrels, these cost about three to fifty, four dollars to get. Um, there are cheaper things to do with this. There's different ways to do this. This is just what we chose to do. And again, if you're really curious, there's a lot on the internet. Uh, we did a rain barrel project with the uh, Toledo School for the Arts. And uh, they actually, their design cuts the rain barrel here and through here. They two, use two repurposed hinges, and they can lift it up, makes it easier to clean it. 
And they are also able to put a screen across the top of the hole that they did, sort of like you would on the window. So, yeah, question time. A comment. Mm -hmm. We just put paint on the bottom. There you go. And that's one way of doing it, too. It catches that, too. Painting hose. Yeah. Yeah. Buy the nice pipe right, right in. Buy the pretty much. Just get a flexi pipe. And then you just put the paint hose on the bottom outlet. So you just kind of square it. You could do that with the, with the utility knife. Yeah. Stick it right in. So the way you made this barrel, um, I'm the house. I'm the corner of your house. I'm the corner of your garage, the shed. And the idea here is your downspout is going to splash here on the top. Now, for my house, this is fine. It doesn't bother my house at all. In fact, it goes in super fast. It goes in really well. Not everybody likes to hear it splashing. I've had neighbors of other friends of mine say they don't like to hear their rain barrel. I don't know why that's such a big deal, but people have things. If they're home all day and it's raining, they hear your rain barrel. I don't know. I've heard it said more than once. So that's part of what they're going to do, right? It's going to make, it's gonna, you're going to hear it here and you're going to hear it running in, okay? Again, you can, you can modify this so this goes right down in and it doesn't splash. A lot of people don't like it splashing up against their house. If they do have a lot of junk coming down and it hasn't built the filter yet, some of that might end up on your house. You know, if, if you want it to look all cleaned up and fancy, there's other ways to do that. But think about it that way. But that's the whole point, is that the water's coming down and going directly into your barrel as efficiently as you can do it. Okay? A lot of people, the first thing they'll say is, how do I get one installed? Your pipe goes like this, you're going to cut it. It's very simple. My suggestion is you put a bracket on both sides of your cut and do a diversion into here, um, just because you don't want this flopping around when we get wind. Um, I've had to have my husband went back and rebracketed the one we did because our shrubs knocked the, the thing around a little bit. But that's basically the case. So cutting it off and then rerouting it how you so choose. I like the modification that Hal did. One, it's nice and clean and it's you know you can walk by it periodically in your yard and dump it out. I like this one because I just pull my screens out and then I basically do this and then I put it back in. That's basically what I do. And um, you can then, if you leave this nice and bracketed and you keep that lower piece, um, if you so choose to take your rain barrel and put it inside all winter, um, you can re take a, um, a female and a female connector here and put the same downspout that was there previously and marry it up um, and put it right back as it was before you put the rain barrel in. And I've done that in one of my sides of my house. Um, because in the winter time, when I take the rain barrel away or I turn it upside down, um, I, it just seems like that's where the wind cuts through and makes noise, and the things end up going places into the neighbor's yard. So I've changed it up that way a little bit. Um, but for the most part, um, my neighbors have liked these. Just so you know, they they want one after they see me using it. Okay. So water goes in, water comes out. What happens once it's full and it's still raining? Okay, that's the emergency overflow. This, can, again, can be done lots of different ways. What we decided to do when we were making these up was we started off with this. Because a lot of the commercial barrels, this is what their overflow looks like. They have this up here. Same drill hole, it'd be real convenient, right? You don't have to put by one whole bit. It's very simple. The only thing we found that happens is the way the rain is coming now, we don't get those as many of those quarter inch rainfall events that super slow. We get one and a half inch rainfall events and they happen in less than three hours or they're happening in really short order and we're having trouble because the, the, the water can't get through here fast enough. You saw how big this was, right? Now it's not full when the water comes down, but you can kind of see the difference, right? If it's really cooking out of here, it's going to have trouble getting through here. Okay, so what we decided to go to is a, is a larger fixture. Um, we've tried three quarter inch ones, one and a half, one and a quarter. What we've settled on is, is in there, and it's mostly because these are readily available. You can get them in, you know, the Schedule 40, lots of different plastic types. Um, and, and these, keep in mind, these are not under pressure, so this fitting doesn't have to be perfect and all sealed up and everything. It just needs to make sure most of the water is coming out through your overflow. This overflow is as cheap as the day is long. This is a portion of a sump pump pipe. So I can buy these and do these for very, very cheap. This is one option. Um, the ones I have at home, I actually do have taps. I bought the bigger caliber ones. And my overflow is actually garden hoses. And a lot of them, I have them rerouted back out into my garden. And I have a couple different low spots that, because I have sandy loam soil, it soaks it up right away. I don't really care. Just trying to keep it away from the foundation of your house, OK? And the, the idea is, especially with those of us that have those highly pervious soils, that water goes in and if it's, it, 
then absorbing into those concrete blocks. If you have a basement or a crawl space, that water gets in there and it can destroy the grout, it can destroy the block itself, and you don't want to do that. But enough freeze and thaw with some water up against there, you're going to have some serious issues. So the idea is to get the water someplace that's not going to do that kind of damage. Okay? For me, all my overflows go to another place I want water because I either have I have a river birch, one of them goes off to the river birch. The river birch loves being inundated and then drying out and inundated, drying out. That's what it prefers to grow at. And the other one are my, I have a perennial bed that's all native perennials and it could care less if it gets inundated and dries out. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so three holes. This hole too, it's another round bit. Again, you're riding the rain barrel and you're going in. My suggestion here is you want it close to the top but not all the way up at the top because this area right in here you come up once, you're, once we're done here, you can take a look. The plastic is super thick. Structurally, it's holding the integrity of the barrel and drilling through that, you don't want to lose that strength, right? So you go just a little below that, okay? It does prevent it too, if the water's coming down really fast and this is having trouble keeping up, you have a little bit of room in there before it's overflowing from the top as well. Uh, and then one of the other options, and I didn't have any pictures of it, that might be fun, is you can take these out, they call these bottoms, you can take these out. Some of those downspouts are round now, and they almost exactly fit into the bun holes too. But again, you might want to do what Todd and his wife are doing, is using like a nylon or some screening on that, pull those out to be able to clean them periodically. Because the downspout is transmitting anything that's up on your roof, you know, all that, and all that's going to be down here. So a way to kind of keep this minimally full of junk, okay? Does anybody have any questions? Like I said, it's simple. We do workshops periodically, um, and these also get sold just like they are, just like this. Uh, because there are some folks who are handy and some folks who are not. Um, the Swan Water District so sells these for $50. When we do it in a workshop and you do the work and I get you to put a hand tool in, I, they're $35. We, and we do everything. We bring everything, and then we've done it for um, one of the churches on the west side and a couple other spots. Um, and mostly gardening groups. We do sign ups, general sign ups. We did, we've done them in, ha in Holland, the village of Holland yeah. does this. They're required to do some stormwater outreach, and this is a tool for them to have people come in. And, and normally we are booked, and then some. We usually have waiting lists. We've done as many as five in a year, and we usually couldn't possibly keep up with as many people. So that's why I'm glad when University Church does theirs too, and we spread the wealth, and people are making it. We started off selling these. Um, and buying in bulk. And the cheapest we could get the price down to was $72. And uh, I had a significant problem with that because most of the communities we were working in with rain gardens um, are in the CSO areas and there's no way those folks have $72 to put a rain barrel in, especially not multiple ones that they could use. So we looked at different options. Um, Coke was willing to donate the barrels, so we got it down to 50 to where we could sell it. It was already all done. That's about as cheap as we could get it. And um, I still don't think it's cheap enough. So we got down to, can we, can we do this in a way where they're doing the work, um, whoever wants it. And so we can get it down to about $35 now if somebody else is doing it. And, we're, that's, and I'd still like to do better than that. I think there's, still, there's folks out there who could use this, but it, it's a lot, it's a lot of money. So you can also, if you want to, if you've got, like I do, I have a really big roof. Um, you can daisy chain, is the way my dad uses the term, put another hole here so when this fills up, instead of just going back out into the low spot in your yard or your garden, you can access up to another barrel and another barrel. Okay, you just have to make sure the height of this, when the water comes up, it's actually flowing into the next barrel. So you might want to tear them a little bit, get the next one a little lower, a little lower, and then the last one still is going to need the overflow to go someplace. You need the safety, you need the safety out there somewhere so the water doesn't end up where you don't want it. Any other questions? How long do they typically last? I mean, with plastic and getting exposed to the heat, um, how long should you work? That's a good question. I don't know. <clears throat> Since we've had many been doing it for yeah, 10 years, I've never failed. I don't know. That's an interesting thing. I can ask Coke, though, if they have a license to replace cool. the, the circuits. Maybe. 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 If you get Schedule 40, this is meant to be sunlight resistant, and the brass generally does. Is it going to happen? But I don't know about this actual plastic. In terms of affecting the quality of water, mm -hmm. is that what I think? Have a fun. And there, there are a few articles, a couple of things I've read up on on urban gardening. They're worried sometimes about what's coming off your roof. Um, and you could do some sampling for that fairly easily and find out if you're pulling anything in. But I, nothing I've read indicates there's anything huge. The big part is 
as much as Todd was ambitious and drank his water out of here after he boiled it, because there's birds up on your roof, right? He didn't boil it. He and boiled you have a metal roof. Yes. So the asphalt shoes. I will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I so. I, this whole time I've been sitting here thinking, oh, I should have clarified that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> 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 but really, they've done some for, for a lot of the urban gardens that they've done sampling and stuff. Some of the ones out in the Bronx and stuff, I pull data from them, and they do the sampling. And if, even if they're watering their fruits and vegetables, they're not finding any issues there from the from the roof collected water. So. Yeah, this is gross so I was just. Yes. Do you know what was in here? It was from Coca-Cola. Yeah. It's always corrosive. Yeah. Yes. But it's what we drink. Yes. It's it's over there in the ingredients. It's the ingredients. These are food grade. This is ingredients. You ever put a meal 